Hey everyone, today we'll be going over how to do a sequential randomizer. So basically effects like uh, the green flags effect by Laura Guyot, red flags effects by Laura again, and a few others, uh, where each where each uh, object flips and then you get a random a randomized option and it goes on for two or three times. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing we'll need is a 3D plane. That's what we'll be, we'll need one for the front. And I'm clicking Control D to duplicate this. And we'll need one for the back. So this is basically a plane in the 3D space. So we can rotate it and a bunch of other things we wouldn't be able to do with, say, a 2D image or, or, or a 3D image. So this particular one, we're going to use the 3D planes. So I created a front and a back. Uh, next, I'll need materials, uh, because as you can see, our planes are the grayish. Uh, nothing's on them. So to put pictures or even just change the color, uh, the first thing you'll need to do is create a material. So we have a bunch of options, occluder, standard PBR, onlit, and goes on. We're going to use the onlit. And what that material does, it isn't affected by light. So whatever image we apply to it, it's just going to look the same. No matter if, uh, no matter if light is on it or not, it's going to be just as bright or just as dark. So we have an, uh, one unlit, let's call this front. Uh, duplicate this again control D if you're on Windows uh, and then back uh, instead of uh, another option instead of control C or control D you can just hit duplicate and it, it will do the same thing see uh, they did that all right so before I continue let's assign so front we'll assign it to front and you can already see changes coming in and back we will assign to back also when i was moving around the rotation it seemed this is off of zero so i'm just bringing it back to zero so the rotation is back to its default settings now the next thing i'm going to do is import all the images i'm going to use so for this tutorial i'll be doing a i guess my favorite snacks kind of effect so I already got some snacks I generated in mid-journey. So we're going to import in a uh, texture sequence. Uh, if you remember for texture sequences, all of the images have to be the same size or it will not work. But this uh, texture sequence is just as it states, like a sequence is textures, a group of textures, and they're all the same size and it just shuffles between them. There we go. Perfect. Uh, so just to show you what that looks like, uh, we're going to go to front and see, dot, 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 dot. yeah, uh, here we are, <laughs> just at a mental freeze. And we click the, the animated texture we just imported and you're not going to see it just yet. Uh, but let me show you how we'd be able to see it, uh, just to show you what it looks like. There you go. We have a few things to change first. Control zero and let's just set everything back to its default. And turn the texture off just for now. So the next thing we're gonna do is do 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 go into the materials and we have to change a few things in the render settings. So turn depth uh depth test off for both. Uh, don't worry too much into this as yet. As you go on and you go on to create more effects, you'll understand why we do this. But just for the uh, this example, don't worry too much about it. So back call mode for back is set to back. The back material, the call mode must be set to back, and the front material, the call mode must be set to front. Perfect. Now the final touch is we're gonna have another three D. Actually, let's just duplicate this. Or no, instead of a, we're going to use an empty mesh. And the idea is if you've ever seen a lollipop, there is a stick there. If you turn the stick, 
the the faces of the lollipop flips. If it's a, like a flat heart lollipop, it'll go onto the back side. But all you need to do is turn the stick itself. So this is the idea. Uh, if we this empty mesh, it has its own uh, axes. So if we attach, so let's drag front underneath and let's drop uh, back underneath. So the goal is by having them under the empty mesh, if you rotate the empty mesh or the stick of the lollipop, it should turn both as it does. Nice, 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 nice. All right, so on to the final steps. So let's turn again, see what happens. Interesting. Uh, da, 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 da. Is there something that we are forgetting? Uh, render state depth off back and as for front depth and front should be good. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, <laughs> uh, the rotations, the rotation needs to be reset to zero. Perfect. Now, if we flip this back, great. Uh, it's always great to just check over our work just to make sure we're not having any bugs like that. Um, so the final thing to do here is to turn front to actually before that, let's import the image I'm going to use to kind of have the randomized images on. And I'm going to put that on the front material. So when we're changing images, again, the meshes are the literal objects. Materials are what you apply to the meshes. And to give them, to add an image or a texture to the material, that's how, I guess, you'll see an image on the mesh. So we have to apply to the material. So we're going to apply to front. Uh, click texture on. Or actually, yes, let's apply it to both. I like this idea. Let's apply it to both. That's a nice little plate icon. And then if we flip it around, perfect, perfect. All right, so as for the final thing, I'm gonna be a, do a bit of renaming. Um, all right, flip one. Or I guess plate one. Plate one makes a lot more sense. Because we're probably going to do two or three plates. But after doing the first one, it'll be a lot easier from here. Alright, and the final thing we're going to do is duplicate one final time. We're going to duplicate the front. And then what we're going to call this is food. And basically, um, I would like to keep the... Let me turn this off for a minute. I would like to, I'd like to keep the plate image there. I don't want to replace the plate image. So I would like to keep it on both sides. And if you remember, always just reset all these values or just hit control Z to undo any movement you've done. But I want to keep the plate images. So I'd like to add the food on top of that. So let's move food underneath front and then turn that back on. And then we'll just duplicate the front material, rename it to food. And then we go over to the inspector panel and where you see texture, where the plate once was because we duplicated it. So it kept uh, the, the textures from front material. You just apply the animated texture. All right, let's see what that looks like right now. So if we can plate, plate one, I should say, and rotate. Hmm, <laughs> not showing as he did. Oh, see, this is why it's always good to double check. Uh, when we duplicated it, it, we duplicated the front, uh, the front plane. So it took the front material. Uh, so let's just change the material to food. And there you have it. It's just rotating. We'll change this afterwards. 
but I like what it's looking like so far. Let's just resize it a bit. Uh, scale, let's set this to 0 0.6 on all three. 0 0.6Y and 0 0.6Z. Nice, nice, nice. Then just head back over to plate and just reset all the values to zero. This is what it looks like so far. And we're almost done with the basic designs. Let's move this up a bit. And instead of three, let's just do two. Uh, just for, I guess, the look of it all, like kind of like how two would look here. So that, that we have plate one, we can just duplicate this. And it will keep all these the sub objects, the objects that we had underneath plate plate one. We'll just copy it over, and then we'll just call this plate two. And then we move this over, and voila! Now we get to scripting. Okay, so scripting can seem very scary sometimes, especially when you're just starting. But uh, visual scripting is not bad. It's once you lay out your general idea of things you'd like to do. So let's get started. So what we're trying to do is say, okay, when the effect starts, we flip the first one, the first plate, and show a randomized, uh, show a randomized food there. And then after that's done, we flip the second plate. So what would we denote as the effect starting? So I, for me, I like when the effect starts, when the user records a video. So when video is recorded, let's pause this for a bit so we don't see every single change. When the video is recorded, and if you want to learn a bit more about a note, this little eye icon here, you click on it and you can learn more, which brings you to the website, or you can uh, just read the notes that it, that are right here. Okay, so when the video is recorded, uh, we want the first one to flip. Now, what would that look like? Or actually, before that, let's... Actually, yeah, let's go with the first one flipping. So I'll use a transit by time. And what transit by time does, it can... It takes... You go from one value to another value in a specific duration of time. So in this case, where we have the plane ones, uh, let's change it from number to vec3 because we're going to rotate the plane and the rotation is on a three-dimensional axis. So let's move this back. And we want it to go from 0, 0, 0 to... We want the y to go to 359. So from 0, 0, 0 to 0... 359 and Z and then check duration uh, how long do we want that to take uh, we want that to take say a second now are we done no we have to so video record says okay on start trigger this transit by time transit by time says okay we'll go from uh, 0y to 359 y in one second it's calculating that but it's not sending that information anywhere so we'll go to plate one, click right here in the inspector panel where it says rotation, set rotation. So we're setting the rotation and then we'll carry over the stay, uh, the stay trigger because it's saying it's more so a while trigger. So while the duration from one second, while it's moving from zero to 359, keep, keep sending that information and then you send the value over. Now let's see what it looks like. All right, let's put that for a second. And there we go. It did a quick flip. Now let's uh, try and understand what's going on. All right, uh, 0 to 359. Let's reset it. All right, let's try 0 to 180. Nice, nice, nice. So as you can see, 359 basically just did a full, a full, I guess a full orbit, a full, uh, full turn. So it went back to the side that we we're originally seeing, but by going 180, you kind of cut the halfway. And so we're able to see the food. 
Now, let's see. Uh, it keeps randomizing, but we want it to be, say, a burger or just one, uh, one image. So let's use another video record node. Which is basically, again, on start. No, yeah, let's use the video record node. And then on start, which is on start recording. We'll go to the index generator. And I only know these, like all these nodes, because of how many effects I've been creating. So after a while, you pick up which node to use and when to use it. So you go to the effect generator. And what this does is it's a number, ran like a random number selector. So you give it a range to select from, and then it'll output that number. So on video start, once they start recording, this gets triggered. And let's go from, I believe I had six, I believe I had six uh, images in our animated text, right? Imported six images, uh, six food images. So let's go from zero to five, which is six if we start counting from zero. And then we'll import that number to, we'll carry this over to an animated, animated texture player. And this is an animated texture. Uh, let's let me just play this for you. What we're seeing right here is an animated texture. It's um, remember an animation is just a group of Im a group of images or a group of frames. So these are the frames, and it's being animated. That's why we're looping through them. So to control that, we'll use an animated texture player. So what we do is we we move over the index number to the from and to the two. And basically what that does is after the index generator selects a number from zero to five, it says, okay, animated texture player, you're going to play that number. But uh, let's see. So the animated texture player, it generally just plays a group of frames. So say you imported a long animation, but you only wanted to play a small bit of it, you'd use the animated texture sequence. But because an animated texture is just a group of frames, if you say, okay, play from play uh, frame three to play to, why do I keep saying play? Uh, from frame three to frame three, it's just going to only play one frame, frame three, because frame three to frame three is just frame frame three. So what we're saying is, okay, uh, on start, generate a number, and then play that whatever number we, we get, we uh, we output that frame in the animated texture player. So let me just say we go back to animated textures and select the imported texture. And there we go. So on video start, we generate a random number from zero to five. And then we kind of trick the animated texture player. Not really trick, but use it in a specific way where it only outputs one, one frame which is, say, go from frame X to frame X, which is basically the same frame. So frame 3 to frame 3, frame 0 to frame 0, which will only be, which will output frame 0. So we're almost done. Uh, let's go back. Nice. Uh, I keep selecting Apple. Oh, another thing, uh, This, which is why it's always good to click this information icon. Uh, the loop cycles through the frames, starting at the original count. So when we set it to loop, it's always going to output the first the first frame. If we set it to random, it's going to choose a random one each time. Same with shuffle. But we're going to go with shuffle because we're going to use we're going to use this effect. We're going to use this same index generator on plate number two, and you'll see why we use shuffle a bit later. So we're almost done. There we go. So the main thing is on video start, the first plate flips, we get a food. And then the second one, the second plate flips immediately after. So we know that this is basically what's causing the plane, the plate to flip uh, transit by time node, which says, okay, from a zero Y to one eighty Y in a second. So what we can do is say, okay, so since we know this is what basically is the plate flipping we can say all right so when the plane when this ends 
we do what we just did for plate one to plate two. So let's first duplicate this because again, we're just going to do zero to 180 for plate two. And then we say, okay, when this ends, which was used for plate one, start this other transit by time. And then as you can guess, we're going to apply that to plate two. Right, set rotation. And then again, we move over the stay, which says constantly do this, constantly update this uh, rotation during the duration and then move the current value over. So let's see. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Um, why we already see an image here is because uh, Play 2 already had an image attached to it. So let's Apple, let's change this, rename this to Apple 1. All right, so both of these, both of these uh, plates, both had the food material attached to it, and the food material was showing the Apple One texture. So what would hap what what happened was uh, because we already set up what the Apple One animated how it should operate, where it only outputs one image, it was doing that for both plates. So we'll need a separate animated texture for plate number two. So that's why we renamed Apple or the original animated texture to Apple one, denoting that we're going to use that for plate one. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate uh, the animated texture item Apple one, and we're going to call that Apple two. And as you can see, it still has the original group of textures or the group of images that we had in Apple one. And then after that, uh, we're going to duplicate the materials. Well, the food material. So we had food one and we're going to have food two. And we're at the final stretch and the texture will just set the texture for food two is set to apple two. And we're almost done. So let's just replay it one last time so we can see the final step we're at. So right now it's duplicated on both. So set, uh, we go to plate two, go to food here and then set this to food two. And right now you'll see the final step that we have left. All right, so let's play this. So the first plate is independent and then when it, when, once it's done, the second plate plays. Now all we have to do is do what we did to the first plate where we set it to only output one image. So let's see, how are we gonna go about this? So we know this is the process um, on what that we did for the first image on video record. We set set the first image to a random number from the index generator. So what we can do is just duplicate this. And we'll choose a, we'll keep the index generator values from zero to five because uh, it is the same group of images. And the only thing we'll change is the, that we'll, we're doing this for Apple II. All right, so let's see. So as you can see here, what had happened here was, uh, this was done as soon as the video started recording, but this was only done to Apple I. So we can uh, just create another video record to, there are other ways we could have done this in terms of we could have just connected, uh, let's see, the on begin, but just so it makes sense for you, we're doing the same thing where we're saying, okay, when the video records, choose a random value from zero to five, and then set that value to the specific frame for Apple II. And that's what we did for Apple I. So this is how it will look. And there you have it. Now let's reset it a bit. Nice. Uh, perfect. One last time. Fish and burger. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. The Discord group is in the bio for the Effect House Discord. Uh, in the description for the Effect House Discord. 
uh, where we pretty much have a bunch of templates like this and a lot of creators willing to help and talk and just a nice community overall. I also have my uh, my socials in the description in the event you have any questions and you want to reach out. Uh, I guess the best place to reach out would probably be Instagram. So, yes. Uh, let's see. Any final things? Um, there is one thing where there, since we use different index generators, they might select the same number. So, say this index generator was like, okay, a random number between 0 and 5, 3. And this also gave three. Uh, that means both these plates would have the same image. So I guess an additional thing, if you want to go a bit further. Okay, so an interesting way in how we could um, do that where it doesn't duplicate the values is use the same index generator for both. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's pause this for a bit. But by doing that, uh, the animated texture player still needs to be triggered. So you'll say, oh, we'll just move this value over. But even if we move this trigger, which it can't be moved, you can't have a uh, trigger go to two different uh, nodes, unless you're using like a sequence. Uh, even if we did move that, it's just gonna have the same exact value. So we wanna use the index generator, but the a cool thing with the index generator is each time a value gets sent to it, it outputs another random number. And by using the shuffle mode, it doesn't duplicate the values. So what we can do is, uh, da -da. we can attach a do once on this side, uh, do once here. And let's also let's use a sequence before that. And it is getting a bit messy. Again, this is just an additional thing. If you're okay with the first set, you should be good. And a do once. And then, let's see. And then a do n here. There are a bunch of ways we could have done this, but just going, I guess, the shortest route. And... The final touch, I'll explain in a second. Probably use for loop. Uh, from 0 to... From 0 to 2. And it should work. Now let me just test it out. And we should be good. Ooh, close, close, close. Oh, I see. Uh, body. Perfect. And this way it never duplicates. Uh, so now, again, this there are many ways to do this, but I chose the one that was probably the quickest to explain. So when the video records, we're going to use a for loop. And a for loop basically says, okay, starting from zero, We'll go to two and we'll make like, we'll, we'll count by one. So it goes zero, one, it makes a change from zero to one. Then it sends a, a, a trigger here saying, oh, we went from zero to one. Then from one to two, it goes again. So this uh, triggered two times. This triggered two times and two triggers got sent to the index generator. So the first one, it selected a number, say it selected a one. It then said, uh, it then goes to the uh, animated texture player over here and then says 1-1, one, one, and it does it here as well. But because this has a do once, it doesn't get the second change that this uh, for loop makes. Uh, the second uh, texture player has a do two times, so it did get both changes. It got the first one where it said 1, and then it was like, oh, we'll set to 1. But because this changes two times, when the second number got generated in the index generator, it got sent to the animated texture down here because it is allowed to get two changes. Um, don't worry too much about this. If you understood the first method and you're okay with it, that's fine. If you have any questions, you could always reach out on Discord. But again, the always try to click the little info icon here so you can understand a little bit more about it and just play around with the effect, make some changes, and see what you understand, see what you don't. 
and feel free to ask questions in the Discord or you can reach out on Instagram.